Oh, you're here. I do apologize. Another matter was occupying my mind just now. Hanfeng's Ironmongers has a long history. Ownership has been passed down from generation to generation, and today it is known as the most reputable blacksmith in the land. The art of forging prizes precision and diligence. The tasks of forging weapons and processing ore require a great deal of time and patience. To most, the sound of iron being struck with a hammer is loud and intrusive. But to those who appreciate this art form, it is like the toll of a bell, breathtaking and transfixing. The sound of metal clashing with metal causes one to fall quiet, calms one's spirit, focuses one's attention, and then, with a mind emptied of unwanted thoughts, devote oneself fully to the work at hand. Any talent I possess comes not from natural inclination, but out of necessity. In times of war, weapons are indispensable equipment and highly sought after. The wondrous ley lines of Liu produce all manner of exquisite ore. It follows naturally that distinguished artisans and prized wares arise in response. But I have always thought that a craftsman's ingenuity is far more valuable than any precious stone. The most accomplished in their craft do not limit themselves to working exclusively with rare ores. Well, traveler, after your long sojourn in Liu, I trust you will have heard of the houses of Kun and Yun. The House of Kun is a long-established name in the art of forging. To this day, their descendants continue their craft. The House of Yun did not limit themselves to this craft. They branched out into many different disciplines and districts. Their descendants today still uphold the work ethic taught within their family for generations. Even ostensible perfection can oft be improved upon through diligence. This has contributed towards their excellence in numerous fields. Ah, so you are acquainted with Miss Yun. Yes, the talented Yun Jin of Liyue operatic fame is indeed a descendant of the historic House of Yun. Her ancestors changed professions long ago. It was her father's generation that dedicated themselves to the performing arts. In this day and age, the Yun family's history has been forgotten and nobody knows of the connection they once had to the art of forging. The evolution of families over the ages has been a profound force in shaping Liyue's history. While you're here, if you have the time, you may find learning about the human history of Liyue to be illuminating. Much that you might want to know can be found in books. Even books change over the generations causing discrepancies between their contents and the historical facts. But books can function as a mirror for humanity. Reading is the noblest of pastimes. There is always some benefit to be derived. Ah, I wondered if I might run into you again. This makes the third day in a row. Perhaps it is fate rather than coincidence. Yes. After our conversation yesterday, I thought I might visit the book house and see what constitutes popular literature these days. Indeed. Traveler, do you know anything of the origins of books in Liu? First, people ground wood into pulp to make paper. For ease of reading, they began binding sheets together to make what we now call books. Later, they developed movable type printing to improve the speed and quality of production. Eventually, the technology developed to the point where books like those we see here can easily be produced in great quantities. There has been a proliferation of literary genres and works since that time. Traveler, is there any book from Liu that has made a particularly strong impression on you? Oh, so you've read it too. The author does not lack for ideas. Sometimes they move in strange directions, and even I cannot claim to fully understand their meaning. But it makes for fresh and interesting reading material, 
a lot like reading somebody else's biography. Gods and Adepti are far removed from the mortal experience. That they are difficult to portray in writing is no surprise. It is true that the Geo Archon Morax would journey in the mortal realm from time to time. But there was not quite so much ostentatious shape-shifting as the books would have you believe. When the goal is to wander the streets undetected, donning an overly elaborate disguise is somewhat self-defeating. Such discrepancies illustrate the difference between history as it happened and folk accounts based on hearsay. The value of reading accounts penned by others is in the chance to view the world through their eyes. It is very often an unfamiliar sight, though never an uninteresting one. Ah, yes. A memorable work indeed. I have heard that this is an unpopular book, due to its often impenetrable prose. And yet the Yakshas described in it are real historical figures. They were loyal servants of Liu. They lived through a bitter war and sacrificed much. All of Liu, from harbor to chasm, is indebted to the Yakshas for their protection over the years. I believe you have seen one of these Yakshas in the flesh. Yes. These days he often appears at Dihua Marsh. He is given to solitude, but I suspect that he would not turn away a reliable companion such as yourself. Should you happen to see him, please, pass on my season's greetings. Where the clear blue water runs into the sky, and an ocean of silver grass stretches out before the eye. That was written about Dihua Marsh. From an altitude, the sight of reeds on the water, rustling gently in the breeze, is indeed a sight beautiful beyond compare. Wangshu Inn is located in the heart of Dihua Marsh and provides the finest in both food and scenery. It is no wonder that travelers are fond of staying here. But Wangshu Inn is no mere guest house. It was built tall to provide superior visibility for surveying the surrounding terrain. And it was built here, on this road, because it is one of the main routes for traffic into the region. This is a strategic location that must be defended at all costs. Yes, that is one of the primary reasons that he frequents the inn. Looking southeast from here, one can see all the way to Guyun Stone Forest. With gods lying sealed beneath those rocks, the area is frequently afflicted with monster activity. Xiao often goes back and forth between here and Guyun. Being constantly on the move must be tiring for him. My purpose in coming here was to give him a few words of comfort, but to my surprise, I did not find him on the roof. Perhaps so. Nevertheless, this trip was by no means a waste. Besides, there shall be no shortage of opportunities to meet in the future. On the subject of Wang Shu In, a chef here is highly talented. If I recall correctly, there was a cooking competition hosted in Liyue Harbor during the Moon Chase Festival. This chef was selected to represent the Dihua Marsh region, entered the finals, and took second prize. Culinary excellence should always be shared far and wide. Hmm. Being up so high reminds me of another lofty location. Yes, one that the Adepti once took control of long ago. It then fell into disuse. Whether anyone tends to it these days, I do not know. All right then, that is where I shall go tomorrow. Here above the clouds, where the moon sets and the sun rises before your eyes. One sense of time becomes indistinct. Indeed. You have encountered her several times, correct? You possess a wealth of knowledge and experience, and you have goodness in your heart. Naturally, you are able to have friendly interactions with her. Cloud Retainer is an expert in the mechanical arts and an avid inventor. Generous and kind, Honest and forthright, I treasure her as both a friend and teacher. 
the likes of whom are hard to come by. An old friend once said to me that if you ever have a question on the most trivial of affairs, two hours conversing with Cloud Retainer will leave you better informed than three days and nights talking to every soul in the harbor. Traveler, would you say you agree? <laughs> yes, Cloud Retainer does not waste words, but this is no bad thing. She may say that she prefers to keep her distance from the mortal realm, but in fact, she cares deeply for humanity. Ah, I believe I have gazed at the mountains long enough. Time for a change of scenery. Tomorrow. Yes, perhaps I will head further north. Chingsa Village is one of the more populated places outside of the harbor. I think I shall go there. Compared to the constant hubbub of Liyue Harbor, it is far more serene here. It is a pleasant and leisurely atmosphere, not unfit for a festival. On the way over, I saw grandparents preparing meals, children learning to make Shao lanterns. It was quite nostalgic for me. It took me back to the very earliest days of Liyue's history. Back then, most able-bodied adults were busy supporting the war effort or helping to build the city. Like now, the oldest and youngest supported each other, living humble lives. Indeed, their lives were not easy. But the people of Liyue have tenacity and optimism in their bones. They will never stop striving for progress, no matter how much destitution they face. In ancient times, Chingsa village was once ravaged by the Chu. It is now several thousand years since it was put to rest. Over the millennia, people built dwellings and worked the fertile land, creating the spectacular view we now see today. That after it died, its body became the rocky mountains and flowing waters of Chingsa. I too have heard this story. The idea is captivating, though I'm afraid it is pure fantasy. Lofty mountains have stood, and spring water has flowed here since time immemorial. But people now inhabit this place is solely because they have toiled to make it so. Chingsa's verdant hills and stunning waters, paired with the tranquil atmosphere here, make it a place of extraordinary beauty. A rare blessing indeed. Oh. One of the villagers generously gifted me with some fresh bamboo shoots. They will add some seasonal flavor to a meal on my return to Liyue Harbor. Seasonal bamboo shoots are yet another rare blessing offered by Chingsa Village. <laughs>